While standing on the surface of the Earth, the air pressure around us is one ATM, atmosphere. When we go beneath the waves of the ocean, however, the pressure on our body increases by one ATM for every 10 meters we descend. In other words, at the deepest point in the ocean, slightly under 11,000 meters, the pressure on your body would be 1,100 times greater than the pressure at sea level. At the bottom of the ocean, the human body would be crushed under the extreme pressure. Our eardrums would rupture, our lungs would fill with blood and then collapse, and suffocation would be instantaneous. In fact, this fatal series of events would happen only a couple thousand feet below the surface. Despite humanity's vulnerability at those depths, there are sea anemones, worms, fish, whales, skeels, crabs, and thousands of other sea creatures that seem to handle intense pressures without a second thought. When human beings dive underwater, the pressure that we feel comes from the air in our bodies being compressed. We have air in our ears and sinuses as well as our lungs and blood vessels. Water pressure can be intense, causing that air to compress within those organ systems and tissues. Water, however, is not compressible. Fish don't have air pockets that can be compressed, especially since they don't use lungs to breathe. They are composed largely of water, so the pressure differential remains balanced. The deepest dwelling fish have been found at roughly 27,000 feet below the surface. However, some whales, seals, and other cetaceans can dive to impressive depths of nearly 10,000 feet. These creatures have lungs and vascular systems that are somewhat comparable to human beings, but they aren't crushed into oblivion. How is that possible? Firstly, the lungs of these creatures are completely compressible, meaning that they can force all of the gases in their lungs into their bloodstream and muscles, where it can essentially dissolve under the pressure. These organs have adapted to hold more myoglobin, the oxygen-storing protein in muscles, as well as hemoglobin. This collapse of their lungs also prevents gas exchange at the alveoli, thus preventing nitrogen from entering the bloodstream, which would result in the infamous bends, which human deep-sea divers experience if they rise from great depths too quickly. Many deep-sea diving creatures, like whales, have naturally learned how to rise slowly through the water, decompressing just as human divers do, to prevent this painful condition. Below a certain depth, advanced creatures with complex organ systems, those other than anemones, worms, and certain arthropods, simply cannot survive. What allows fish to dive to depths of over 25,000 feet is the presence of a particularly hydrophilic substance called trimethylamine oxide, which prevents the distortion and compression of proteins and other vital molecules within the body under intense external pressure. However, at even more extreme depths, that molecule fails, so there is a depth limit for fish and marine creatures. For obvious reasons, studying these creatures is very difficult, as most will die due to a lack of pressure when they're brought to the surface. Their membranes are so uniquely adapted that they cannot maintain their integrity under anything but extreme pressure. In other words, certain mysteries of the deep are likely to stay that way. <laughs>